My name is Maggie Connell, and today I'm representing the Council of Canadians, the Fredericton Chapter, and I'm joined at the table by Jim Emberger from Nebraska, Ron Trombley, the uh, chief of our uh, Wollaston Grand Chief, sorry, Ron, Alex Bailey, Fredericton District Labour Council, Charles, Charles Terrio, filmmaker from Kedgwick. We're here today to launch our joint campaign to bring Dr. Cleary back for the holidays. Between now and the holidays, in the spirit of giving and trust, we are asking our government to bring Dr. Elish Cleary home for the holidays. During the 2014 provincial election campaign, the Liberal government committed to, quote unquote, ensuring the independence of medical officers of health. We, the undersigned, are calling on the government of New Brunswick to reinstate Dr. Elish Cleary as Chief Medical Officer of Health. The following groups, organizations, academics, doctors, and health professionals have signed on to the following statement. I'll read you the list of the people who have signed on. In organizations, we have the Citizens Coalition for Clean Air, the Conservation Council of New Brunswick, the Council of Canadians, Council of Canadians Fredericton Chapter, Council of Canadians Kent County Chapter, Council of Canadians St. John Chapter, Fredericton and District Labour Council, Green Light, Feu Vert, Grand Falls, Hampton Water First, Kent South No Shale Gas, Copit Lodge Elsie Bukta, Memram Cook Action, New Brunswick Anti Shale Gas Alliance, New Brunswickers Against Fracking, Dope Town, Organic Crop Improvement Association Atlantic, Our Environment, Our Choice Kent County, Sierra Club Canada Foundation Atlantic Canada Chapter, Sustainable Energy Group Woodstock. Tantramar Alliance Against Hydrofracking, Sackville, Taymouth Environmental Action Group, Water and Environmental Protection for Albert County. Under the category of medical, we have Dr. Carolyn Luba Darcy, Fredericton, Dr. John O'Connor, Fort McKay, Alberta, Dr. Joseph Asher, Dr. Marianne Bramstrup. Dr. Paula Tippett, St. John, Dr. Roger Richard, St. Louis de Kent, Dr. Willie Broren, Fredericton, Dorothy Diamond, uh, Dr. Dorothy Diamond, uh, no, I'm sorry, that's Dorothy Diamond RN, Marilyn Merritt Gray, nurse. Under academics, we have <coughs> Alain Patouin from Université de Moncton, Alan Reed, University of New Brunswick, Barbara Clayton, Mount Allison University, <clears throat> Bradley B. <clears throat> pardon me, Bradley B. Walters, Mount Allison University, Carla Gunn, St. Thomas University, Céline Suret, Université de Moncton, Charlene Mays, Univers uh, University of New Brunswick, Dale Dassett, University of New Brunswick, David Bell, University of New Brunswick. David Wal Waltner Toes, University of Guelph, Don Clark, St. Thomas University, Derek Simon, St. Tom St. Thomas University, Donald Cole, University of Toronto, Elise Mayrand, Université de Moncton, Grace Getty, Uni University of New Brunswick, Don A. Cherry, University of Guelph, and University of Waterloo. John Thompson, University of New Brunswick, Judith A. Weiss, University of New Brunswick, Jula Hughes, University of New Brunswick, Julie Guimot, Un Université de Moncton, Kathleen Hughes, University of New Brunswick, Kathleen McConnell, St. Thomas University. <coughs> Kelly Bronson, St. Thomas University, Margot Parks, University of Northern British Columbia, Michael Clough, 
St. Thomas University, Monica Stiltz, St. Thomas University, Nicole O'Brien, University of New Brunswick, Omar Schwinau, Université de Moncton, Pam Burton, University of New Brunswick, Peregrine Riley, University of New Brunswick, Ronald Babin, Université de Moncton, Russ Hunt, St. Thomas University, Sasha Malali, University of New Brunswick, Suzanne Dutziak, St. Thomas University, Thomas Parkhill, St. Thomas University, Tony Diamond, University of New Brunswick, Vladimir Tessik, University of New Brunswick. Under community leaders, we have <coughs> Anne Solomon, retired social worker, Carl Duvenvorden, Upper Kingsclare, Charles Terrio, filmmaker from Ketchwick, Clarence Dolan, St. John, Diane Savoy, Acadie, Dorothy Golden, Toronto, Fred Windsor, St. John's, Newfoundland, Greg Erickson, Ward 8, Helen Chanel, Moncton Riverview Diap, Inka Maluski, Conservation Council of New Brunswick, Janet Magici, St. Thomas University, John Bagnell, Biologist, NB Salmon Council, Julia Linke, Taymouth, Kelly Porter Franklin, Nanaimo, BC, Neil Mac McLean, St. John, Ron Trombley, Grand Chief, Wollaston Grand Council, Serena Francis, Elsie Bukta, Stephen L. Wilson, Woodstock, Terry Sisson, Tobik Valley, Willie Nolan, Kent County. That makes the list um, up to date as of right now, but we continue to take names. So these, these people have all signed on in support of the following statement. Today marks the first day of an extensive province-wide campaign. Between now and the holidays, in the spirit of giving and trust, we are asking our government doctor to bring Dr. Elish Cleary home for the holidays. This campaign is to encourage all people across this province to email and or phone several MLAs and ask them to speak up publicly for Dr. Elish Cleary to be reinstated. Individuals and groups are also encouraged to meet with their local MLA and ask them to speak up publicly to reinstate Dr. Cleary. You can post on Facebook and Twitter the response from your MLA, whether positive or negative. Several groups in this province will be watching for MLAs who speak in public or release press statements that ask to reinstate Dr. Cleary. An MLA checklist will keep track of these MLAs and be regularly updated on the website. The list will also be broadcast via social media to constituents. In other words, we're making a list and we're checking it twice. Additionally, we are calling for people across this province to decorate trees, wreaths, and other visible objects in your house, in your community, and in your favorite natural, natural wonder. For example, a forest or a stream, river, wetland, bay, with objects that include the message, bring back Dr. Cleary for the holidays. For example, you could use small recipe cards with a message on it and a red ribbon attached to it, red or green, or you could use aluminum, <coughs> pardon me, aluminum foil <coughs> to fashion small stethoscopes for decorations. Or you could just use good old New Brunswick imagination and have fun. Be sure to take a picture of it and post it on Facebook and Twitter, encouraging others to take up the challenge. How imaginative can we be? To help this initiative, this initiative, we have six Cleary Christmas cards that here's an example of one right here that uh, you can find these on the website as well and they can be printed and uh, folded and you can print your own message on it if you like you can also print 
um, your first name here. For example, if these cards could also represent uh, something in, uh, in our natural world. So this one has uh, a graphic of a deer in the forest and it's from Do Remy from Durnbridge. <laughs> Okay, the rest of the cards look like this. We've, we've put together two Christmas cards. They, they'll come on a sheet like this, and of course you print them off, cut them, and fold them. We have two for kids <coughs> that they can hang, two for adults, and two more for uh, the, your natural world, the wildlife. Okay, we encourage people to fill these out. <clears throat> tie them up with a piece of green or red ribbon on a tree, wreath, community location, or favorite habitat, and take a picture of it to post on Facebook or Twitter. Okay, so that's the start of the campaign. Uh, this is the launch board, and now I'd like to introduce others who might like to say a word. Alex, can we call on you? Yeah. Um, sure. Uh, the Fredericton and District Labor Council supports this initiative in an effort to ensure independence, oversight, accountability, and most importantly, objectivity of our government when looking at, at uh, the science behind uh, public safety issues. And um, we feel that this action is necessary to help keep the issue uh, alive and to uh, ensure the best interests of public safety in our communities. Okay, Charles, do you have something you'd like to add? Um, as a filmmaker, I've been working for the last three and a half years trying to raise awareness regarding the state of our crown forest here and the health <coughs> of our crown forest and what we're doing to it and what it is doing to us. Now, the question of glyphosate or glyphosate is raised all over the world. It is banned in many areas. It has been determined as probably cancer-causing. So, and recently, uh, Rod Cumberland, a for former uh, DNR employee who was responsible for the deer population, has stated that the, the, the uh, drop in deer population is directly related to glyphosate, which basically kills everything except for the spruce tree. So there's no food for the deer, the deer go elsewhere and they die population drops. So I'm really preoccupied by the poison that we're spraying on our forests. The poison then drops into our rivers and affects all wildlife. And the fact that in this new um, forestry plan, they're talking about doubling the silviculture in the province. So that means basically doubling the spraying of glyphosate, while all others are banning it. So I think at this point, the fact that we have a medical health officer who's looking into it and then her plug gets pulled really tells me the government doesn't want us to find out or become aware of what's happening here. And that's why I'm here today and that's why I'm supporting this initiative and I, I really want us to tell our governance here that we do not intend to allow the poisoning of New Brunswickers and the poisoning of our forests and the poisoning of our lands. And if it's going to take our voice being raised louder than they expect, then you can be sure I'll be at the front line. Thank you. Uh, Ron, do you our Grand Chief, Willista Grand Council. I want to welcome you to our uh, traditional non ceded territory. Um, when, um, when I was asked to sit on this, uh, this panel to talk about the, uh, the forced termination of Dr. Clary, um, I, I thought long and hard about this, and um, it, it brought me back to an incident that just occurred this past May to John, uh, Dr. John um, O'Connor, who was working at the um, 
for um, numerous communities in the uh, northern part of Alberta. Um, he was um, studying on the, the, the uh, um, increased rate of cancer with, uh, within the communities. And, and he was going to file a report, and um, and uh, well, and behold, um, he was fired. And he, um, there was no cause why he was fired, and um, and um, the increased rate of um, birth defects within um, Chippewa territory was um, um, was growing. So it kind of. Uh, made me reflect back in, you know, to, to make this a little bit more personal to my community. Um, um, uh, my grandmother died of cancer. Um, um, she had breast cancer, and, and my mother um, had cancer, my aunts had cancer, my sister had cancer. So it, um, and, and we live in, in, in a very prominent area where the farmers used to spray and where they used to spray uh, PCP in, in our forest and uh, around the um, potato fields up in Victoria County. And um, our community had um, these pipes put in back in the 60s, uh, asbestos pipes, um, ran through our community. And um, un unfortunately, it, it just took them uh, back in the 90s to replace those pipes. And, and um, our, our community um, had um, many um, members die of cancer. A lot of women um, died of breast cancer and so on. Um, Dr. Clary, what she represents for the Wollstock people or is that she speaks um, um, for the land. And, and Wollaston people, many of us still um, totally depend on the land. We, we um, look like uh, harvest moose, and deer, muskrat, and, and we pick berries, fiddleheads, we fish. So when when this um, um, alarming study was going to put, be put forward by Dr. Clary, it, 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 it was very, very shocking to us to realize that this spray, that this certain uh, industry was, um, was putting all across our territory, our unceded territory, and it could cause cancer. So the alarm, um, um, flag um, went up. Um, we are very, very concerned um, about our well-being and, and about the animals. We, uh, we know that Dr. Clary not only sp spoke for people, but, but she spoke for um, the trees, the fish, the water, and, the, and all, all the animals. So we urge and, and we demand that Dr. Clary be um, uh, 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 reinstated. Um, what they done is they is they muzzled her uh, for what she was finding. And as the Costa uh, Grand Chief, I demand the province to reinstate her. So, yeah. Thank you, Ronnie. top of all these uh, individual causes, each which is sufficient in itself uh, uh, to demand the reinstatement. I'd like to expand a little bit in the, in the, in the spirit of Christmas to a little cautionary tale, a little version of the, uh, the uh, Christmas carol, where we have uh, the part of Ebenezer Scrooge being played by uh, Brian Gallant, who just before Christmas fired <coughs> his, his long-standing, loyal, and hardworking employee, Bob Cratchit, played by uh, Elish Cleary. And this panel here is the visit from Jacob Marley, who, who says to the, to the, 
to, to uh, uh, Scrooge that, you know, you're forging a long chain here uh, of, of bad things that's going to affect you way into the future. So expect to be visited by, you know, the spirits who, who will tell you about this. And so the first spirits to come that night are the spirits of government past, you know, played by, <laughs> by uh, Sean Graham and David Allward, who amidst all the wailing and gnashing of teeth, you know, say that they were cut off before their time. They only got to be one-term governments. And you know, the reason was because we paid so much attention to our friends who we talked to in the back rooms and the hallways of the legislature and, and in, the, in, our, in our rich uh, 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 influence, influential businesses in the province, and we didn't listen to the people who actually elected us. Then he was visited by the government, uh, spirit of the government present and had only to look around to see you know, this great hue and cry arising from the public uh, and, and, and the reason behind that was also because the public was caught unaware by things that had been decided by the government in private and had never listened to the people who were being affected by it. And then finally, we got to see the government of the future and they showed it in the legislature in 2018 and there was nary a liberal seat in the House. So we hope that the end of the story will be just like the Christmas Carol that uh, that uh, Scrooge is going to look around and realize the error of his ways and will find the fattest goose in all of uh, Fredericton and send it along to uh, Eilish Cleary along with a promise to have her job back. And I think that if that happens, then all of us in New Brunswick can say, you know, God bless us, everyone. Thank you. So in, in closing, I just want to stress the following, you know, in New Brunswick, all of us, every single one of us, we deserve a strong, independent voice for, to, that will speak up for our public health and the environment. As adults, all of us can make choices. We have options. We can, we can make those choices. Our children cannot. They cannot make those choices. It's, it's imperative that they have someone to protect what is going to ultimately be handed off to them and to the grandchildren and all those to come. <coughs> I mean, how can the chief medical officer do her job objectively, efficiently, unless she can speak independently on what she finds. Dr. Lish Cleary is what stands between us, the public, and industry, or any kind of disaster coming. It's Dr. Cleary who protects us. She protects our children, she protects our grandchildren, and she is protecting what we're going to hand off to our great-grandchildren. Without, without her voice, there are people all across this province who are feeling very, very vulnerable, and so they should. So we're simply asking, demanding, that Dr. Elish Cleary be reinstated in time for the holidays. We're not asking any questions about why or how or anything. We just want her back. We need her back. We will have her back. Whatever it takes. In closing, we all wish you a happy and a healthy Christmas. Oh, and a final note to our MLAs. We are making a list. And we're checking it twice. <laughs> <laughs>